My name is Monica Rosrepo. I work for uh, Shopify as a software developer. Um, one of the, of the best things about React Native, uh, as you probably already know, is the community support and uh, the interest of companies and developers of making it better. Uh, but have you seen how fast it evolves? How fast frameworks and libraries overall upgrade to include uh, fresh new things? Um, but have you also noticed how slow the process of getting um, to upgrade a brownfield app uh, to use these new features is? Um, this is because every mobile app is different, of course. Uh, many of the changes that we are introducing in React, uh, especially the architectural ones, are more focused on greenfield apps rather than brownfield apps. Um, and obviously, there is a dependency on, well, dependencies, right? So uh, today, I would like to give us a refresher on why app upgrades are challenging. Uh, talk about a little bit uh, um, what has been our experience at Shopify with this. What have we learned from those various upgrades that we have and we have not done yet? And um, what processes do we have in place to account for these difficulties we're upgrading? So let's just start with the first one. Um, why are app upgrades so challenging? Um, from my first years as a de uh, mobile developer, I will never, I was working for MLS at the time, and I will never remember, um, forget, uh, how um, one day I just nicely volunteered to upgrade our application for, I think it was 0.56 to 0.59. Um, and I will never forget this uh, for two reasons. Uh, so the first one is, one, just not volunteer for this type of work alone. And then uh, the second one is I obviously ended up getting one of the most painful tickets I have gotten so far in my career because uh, our application was a hybrid app. Um, it had a lot of uh, SDK integrations into it, many dependencies. So the process was uh, really torturous. Upgrading React Native mobile applications can be challenging uh, due to many things, uh, but I just grabbed a few just, again, as a refresher for us. One of them is obviously breaking changes. React Native is an open source project, as we know, um, that is constantly evolving. So new versions often introduce breaking changes that can just cause uh, our existing code to stop working or to behave differently. Upgrading to a new version might require also significant refactoring of uh, our application's code. And even though the React Native team already has a great job at maintaining the change log when we can see all the difference between like, versions and all that, um, things breaking in our applications, uh, something it is something that is unfortunately almost for sure every time we upgrade. Another reason for upgrades to be so challenging is dependency management. So uh, this one is a fairly common reason for you to uh, not be able to upgrade to um, your application to use the latest versions of React or just even uh, to upgrade libraries in general. Take, for instance, Fabric. So Fabric is one of the most uh, promising features of the new architecture. And um, it offers really good benefits for any application. I, I think majority of applications would like to upgrade to use it uh, because it offers simplified bridge, uh, better UI responsiveness, and asynchronous rendering. But uh, if one of your dependencies in your application doesn't, is not compatible with Fabric, so then you are stuck without it. React Native application dependencies on, uh, I'm sorry, React Native uh, depends on many third-party applications. So when upgrading, um, these, application, these dependencies might also need to be updated to ensure compatibility with our applications. This can be complex. Um, as some libraries might not yet support the latest versions of either React or another library, or might have their own breaking changes. So we usually have to wait for those to solve first on their own, and you know, work, uh, teams work differently at different speeds and all that. Another reason why uh, upgrades are painful and challenging is uh, platform-specific issues. So as you know, React Native aims for, uh, to provide a unified development environment for both iOS and, and Android platforms. Uh, however, each platform has its own set of native APIs, um, components that are different, and design patterns that are just different. So upgrading React Native might introduce platform-specific issues that require additional, additional debugging and platform-specific code changes as well. As a little example, so um, when we use Upgrade Helper, which is uh, the tool that uh, probably you are very familiar with, uh, that help us just go through the process of upgrading our applications, we, we have seen that uh, some of those changes listed for iOS are listed on, um, in Objective-C, right? So um, in our case, we use Swift. 
So another layer of complexity, which is not super terrible, but it still is something to add into the workload of upgrading, is just to translate it between Objective-C into Swift, for instance. Um, tooling and building systems. React Native uses, again, platform-specific uh, build systems like Xcode and Gradle for Android. Upgrading React Native uh, sometimes requires updates in these build systems. We can, ch uh, we can be a little bit challenge, um, challenging, specifically for developers that are not super versed in uh, how uh, these uh, building systems work. And uh, you know, it, again, adds complexity to that. Who hasn't spent tons of time just setting up uh, a local environment to make it work? I definitely have. Quality assurance and just testing overall. So um, ensuring that an upgraded React Native application works correctly in all uh, devices uh, is very important and can be time consuming. So um, there are auto automated testing tools like Detox and um, Opium that can help, but manual testing is almost a most for every application. Um, so we are able to catch subtle issues uh, with the upgrades that we're doing, right? And we, we are able to ensure high quality of our applications beho before they hit um, production. So this is why upgrades are something that we have to think uh, as a whole team when we are thinking of them, just so everybody is aware of what to do and so on. And then finally, we have the lack uh, of a official upgrade path uh, for these upgrades. So again, we have all the contributors of uh, tools like Upgrade Helper uh, doing a great work at uh, helping us to start our upgrades. But as mentioned before, there is not an official path um, for an upgrade for all the applications. There is not like one, all, one fits all type of system. So uh, whatever works for us at Shopify might not work for any of your applications. Uh, this means that in many occasions, uh, developers must face a lonely route to get to the upgrade and uh, obviously rely on community-driven sources and just their own experience to uh, be able to, to bring the upgrade all the way to the end. So uh, what has been our experience at Shopify? So I'm going to start with the elephant in the room, obviously. Uh, we haven't uh, yet upgraded to use the latest uh, React Native architecture. Some of the reasons is uh, to be in this current state is because uh, we, you know, some of the reasons I listed before in my slides, but also because we have different priorities at the time. It's definitely that we're something starting looking into with more speed, for sure. Uh, that being said, we have uh, definitely dealt with many upgrades within our applications. Uh, we have seen dark times and many things broken as well. Um, and we have also tested victory when our upgrades finally go to, uh, you know, our applications go back to life after the upgrades. So let's take a look at some of the struggles that we have faced uh, at Shopify when upgrading to either libraries or just uh, a new version of React Native. Since many of our applications at Shopify are also hybrid applications, um, there has been many cases when our upgrades to either libraries or just new architectures or new versions of React have, uh, have pushed us to patch some of our core libraries. This is a very common pattern, uh, I'm pretty sure, for many of your applications as well. So this makes it so the list of patches that we have in our applications is not one to ignore. We have quite a few. And, um, so every time there is a new React Native version out there that we want to bring into our applications, we also have to take into account those uh, patches that we have in place. Sometimes the perfect outcome um, is that the issue that motivated the patch is solved by the new upgrade, which is awesome. We just get rid of the patch and then just work with whatever we have new. But there are times that we also have to either upgrade those patches or just create new ones uh, to account for whatever is, bro is breaking at the time. Uh, this is one of our big limitations when it comes to upgrading, especially when it comes uh, to architectural changes like the not so recent anymore, but like many, uh, you know, the new version of React. Um, as another example, I don't know if you recall, but back in 2018, uh, I think it was a version 0.54 of React. Um, React introduced a, a significant change in the way promises were handled. So this was a change due to the update in the GSC uh, engine, which, um, as you know, is used for um, execution of JavaScript code by React. Um, and this includes some improvements to the way, again, uh, promises were handled. So this basically, this basically meant that we could start using uh, async and, and await to have a more concise and readable way to work with promises, and, then we can, and the, that we can also start using the finally method uh, just to be able to send and attach callbacks to our promises and uh, you know, have them execute uh, even if the, regardless if the, if the uh, promises were fulfilled or rejected. 
So with this upgrade, we got uh, our applications, uh, applications to build. And this case was just one application to build. CI passed, and everything was uh, looking good. But then we have a lot of issues with uh, our unit tests, because they weren't prepared to uh, these sort of changes. And uh, as you know, testing is very important. So this was also something that, uh, definitely something that we needed to pay attention to and take care of. We ended up having to patch uh, our unit tests so they were able to process and use uh, the new functionality, or at least just to run and uh, keep our things safe while the, the new functionality was being used in our application. Another case um, that we recently experienced uh, related to upgrades uh, was upgrading was one, sorry, one of our versions of uh, WebView. Like, we have a dependency for it, so we upgraded it. This was uh, very surprising, because we thought it was going to be such a simple change. Uh, it was uh, even dependable was the one suggesting uh, to do the upgrade. It was a minimal version upgrade. Uh, but then things started breaking. And, and it was a hard issue to debug, because the reason why things were breaking uh, was while the app was in background mode. So there wasn't a lot of things like uh, strategies to use when debugging that. Um, so after many hours of trying to debug this, we finally found out that the issue was actually coming for the upgrade itself. So the newest version of the dependency uh, came with some faulty, some things that were faulty, or at least didn't uh, work well with our application. And then we also found out that there was a web view that we were using, or, or rather rendering on the, when the app was in background mode. I think uh, this was to send some data or, or something to one of our other applications. Um, and then this was the reason why the application was breaking. So we have to revert the upgrade in this case, unfortunately, and we're waiting for like, uh, the library to just to solve this issue so we can re-implement it. So based on this, uh, what have we learned at Shopify from these uh, experiences and many other that we have had? So the first one that I have uh, quite repeated a few times already is that there is no one fits all solution. So, um, the team at Meta and obviously all of the contributors of the uh, React Native um, repo do a great job on moving the framework forward uh, to improve mobile development, but catering solutions on a case-by-case -case basis is obvious almost impossible um, for them or any company overall, right? So that's an obvious one. Uh, testing mechanisms are crucial, so to mitigate or to bring, uh, to surface the negative effects of, uh, of an upgrade, um, we have to have these mechanisms in place so uh, we assure, again, that the quality of our applications is great before uh, hitting production. Then upgrading the whole framework is not a one-dev job, as I thought before, uh, and it requires time and planning ahead. And having a whole team being at least involved and aware of the upgrade happening so everybody can keep an eye out for you know, things that are breaking or like the new, even the new changes uh, so they can be used within the application. React Native is also a work in progress. Oh, I'm sorry, I just missed one of the slides. Um, React Native is, a, is a, always a work in progress. So um, we, you know, as much as React Native has evolved during the, all these years to become one of the best solutions out there uh, for mobile development, it is still a work in progress and is hopefully and uh, you know going to be like that forever. There is always something good to do. Um, so collaborating to make the upgrade is smoother is not only, uh, not only for Greenfield apps, um, it's a task for all of us, actually. Um, and there is also a great helper, which can also uh, use some love from us um, to help us like, overcome this. OK. So then I want to just uh, conclude with some of the, uh, the strategies that we currently use or some of the processes that we kind of like intuitively have in place to um, avoid having a lot of like setbacks when it comes uh, to developing our applications. And this especially obviously related to upgrades. Um, so at Shopify, we stri uh, strike for always staying up to date or at least try to. We regularly uh, update our applications and, and dependencies to avoid failing too far behind. So this can help minimize the impact of breaking changes that make uh, future upgrades less challenging. In other words, we do, we don't, and I suggest, we suggest uh, for you to do not dismiss a small version of uh, either a library that you're using that is important or just React Native overall, just because it doesn't seem to be impactful enough. At least uh, don't do it if it doesn't break anything in your, in your application. This definitely will cut off some of the uh, trouble when major versions are published. Um, we also use, uh, in particular, Dependabot, which I find really useful for like just tracking in case you don't, you know, it, it gets cumbersome just to have to go through all of your libraries if, it, if this uh, tool didn't exist. 
Um, also, we embrace modularity, so uh, we try as much as possible to structure our application in a modular way, so with clear separations of concerns and well-defined interfaces, again, as much as possible. Um, and this can make it easier to update individual components and libraries um, without affecting the entire application and also establish end-to-end -to -end testing processes. And that brings us to, obviously, we invest in automated testing. Uh, testing React Native application is not always a very straightforward process, as you probably are familiar with that. We have some end-to-end -end testing in place at Shopify, but we also rely heavily on manu manual QA. We are lucky to have a big team uh, that can't just like do, uh, you know, play the role of like being a QA person and just go around, click around, and just be able, uh, you know, break things if possible before we hit production. Um, we also have our own screenshot library uh, that is called React Native Testify. Um, which provides a set of tools and APIs that make it easier to interact with and uh, assert the behavior of React Native uh, components during testing. So this library is a key part of some of uh, our app testing process, since it allows us to register changes in the visuals of our application. So like things like sizing of our components, fonts, and things like that, uh, locations, appearance overall. And this is obviously um, something really hard to test uh, usually. So this uh, library is currently or like beta testing, and we're like, you know, eventually and hopefully we'll be um, able to open source it. I don't know about that. It's not official, but I'm just thinking. Uh, so put it simply, um, establishing a robust, uh, a robust suite uh, automated test, sorry, uh, to catch regressions and just ensure that uh, your application continues to work correctly after an upgrade is very important. Um, this can save time and effort in manual testing and help maintain a high level of quality. We also strive for being very proactive and addressing technical debt. This uh, goes a little bit along with the stay, staying up to date. Um, we regularly review and refactor our application code uh, to address technical uh, debt, such as outdated libraries, deprecated APIs, and just uh, suboptimal design patterns. This is part of the duties of like what our ATC developers do while they are like on call. Um, you know, to make the upgrade process smoother uh, as it helps maintain a long-term health of our applications. And finally, and it's not hidden in the slices, uh, slides, uh, but I think it's a still important part of the process. We stay also informed with anything that is happening within the community. So uh, keeping up to date with the latest developments in, React, uh, in the React Native ecosystem, including new releases, best, best practices, and just community resources uh, is one of our strategies as well to avoid fall, uh, uh, falling behind uh, when it comes to upgrades. Um, and we currently support as well the release efforts of the official React Native team uh, at, um, at Meta, which is like, you know, I, I found to be really valuable for us. That's it. Thank you.